Greetings viewers. On one of my videos about uh, fluid film, uh, one of the viewers asked a really interesting question and that is, is the fluid film or the cosmoline, are they flammable? Uh, I didn't know the answer to that. Um, I mean, the, uh, the can on the uh, cosmoline does say it's flammable, but then again, they contain propellants and stuff like that. So uh, I couldn't really answer that question. So I was like, hmm, well, this would be a pretty much a, a, a good video to make and uh, see how scientific I can get and what kind of trouble can I get in. So let's see. All right, so in the preparation for the video, what I got was I got two of the magnet strips from the ah, from the Harbor Freight because they are gonna be playing my vehicle, if you like. Because you're not even I'm not that crazy to set my own vehicles on fire, no matter how uh, inexpensive they are. So what we're going to do is basically have one being in control, another one is going to be the actual setup with the, uh, uh, with the power, uh, with the fluid film uh, and Cosmoline. So in order to do that, I have some ideas. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to unwrap these uh, and uh, I'm going to see how non-flammable um, the, the uh, control is. And then uh, we're going to make these uh, interesting later on. All right. Let's start. All right, this part of the setup is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, what I was planning to do is to have just uh, one um, one of the magnet strips. Oh, sorry, one of the magnet strips to be um, uh, just devoted to um, being a control, if you like. But I, I realized that they, they, they are about five dollars each, so I wasn't about to throw good money just just because. So what I'm doing right now is I'm exposing one of them to straight up flame for about 30 seconds, and then we're gonna keep the flame on for about 15. And again, this is just a control. I'm not expecting anything to happen, but. I do have my fire extinguisher ready and I do have my coffee in the corner just in case. So we're gonna keep this flame on for about 15 seconds. No, this is not scientific whatsoever, but I'm just trying not to destroy it all the way and I still get some kind of idea are they flammable or not. And that's it, that's 15 seconds. Okay. Um, just a little bit of a darkening, I don't know, can you see? That's actually, that can be actually removed, so it's probably just a, uh, just a residue from the actual flame. Okay, so, and it did get a little bit bent, I don't know, can you see that or not? No big deal. Okay, so, the magnet bar is not flammable, that's a good start, so it's not going to affect our um, results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate one bar to be old vehicle type deal. So I'm going to put some fluids that normally are leaking from the from the vehicles on the uh, on one side and other side is going to be fluid film and cosmoline kind of half and half. Um, and then the reason why I got the the bars, the magnetic bars is I'm going to slap them on the bottom of the golf and drive the golf for a little bit to kind of mimic I guess the, uh, the the real world plus it will give them time to actually cure because of course if I uh, set uh, something uh, on, on, on fire it, that, that came immediately from the can that's not really a real world type deal so let me um, let me get that going it's gonna get messy I promise um, and uh, we'll go from there all right so I got the mask so this one is going to be our um, rust proof bar sample. So what I'm going to do is um, one corner, one third is going to get a uh, the usual rubber uh, rubberized coating 
because that's that's the stuff that most people uh, get this is leftover from god knows how long but it's going to give us at least some kind of idea uh the middle is going to get the um the cosmoline and the last third is going to get a um uh the fluid film and i'm going to apply several coats that's going to be a boring part so basically to mimic what i would do to my own vehicle to basically mimic the, the real world uh, collection if you like of the uh, of the stuff that you can find in your own vehicle now the other one is going to be a little more interesting basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply different kinds of stuff that uh the vehicle may leak or will leak or should leak uh, uh, basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply the, a little bit of oil engine oil old engine oil uh, then we're going to put some uh, atf then we're going to put some gear oil then we're going to put some uh, um, I don't even know. I'm gonna find something like a lithium grease type deal and a little bit of diesel fluid as well to kind of mimic anything and everything that you can find on a, on a vehicle that usually leaks something like that. I'm gonna reapply it a couple of times to soak in if you like um, and then we're gonna leave it for about a few days to, uh, to kind of cake and bake um, and come back and revisit and go from there. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's get painting by the numbers, right? Was it Bob Ross who said there are no, um, no mistakes, just uh, happy little uh, accidents? Oh boy, he probably hasn't seen me do any kind of a work around the garage. Oh boy, it's gonna get messy. So this is the old oil um, that's actually, oh god, this container is, is kind of my, my catch it all type deal. Um, so it has oil from gas engines, diesel engines, you name it engines. <coughs> but that's going to be a great representative of what you can find on under uh, underbelly. Of various vehicles and what gets kicks kicked kicks what gets kicked yeah there we go um by the uh, uh by the bunch of stuff from the road etc this is a container from the diesel perch but it has a little bit of diesel in it that i saved from the last time i did a uh, diesel purge there we go a little bit of diesel there a little bit of oil See what else? Um, ATF, sure. Uh, let's see. ATF or uh, uh, automatic trans <laughs> transmission fluid. Oh boy, is this ATF? No, power steering fluid. Hmm. Super Tech, the cheapest stuff you can find. This was the time when I had um, when I had a Lincoln Town Car, a '94 Lincoln Town Car that was leaking because of the back seal, and I didn't have time to uh, change it. So this was saving me. Not good for environment, I agree. Um, let's see what else we can apply there. Our brake fluid. Let's go get that. Brake fluid. This is probably gonna eat the finish off of that bar, but oh well. And that's what we have it here. And lastly, let's see some of the lithium grease. Good old white lithium grease. There we go. Nice and liberally applied. And last thing, what I'm forgetting. Oh, that's right. The gear oil. This is a synthetic. Wow. Must be nuts. Nuts. Okay. Alrighty. So we got that set up uh, all ready to go. Now let's um, let's do this part here. Hopefully I won't make too much of a mess. 
you have probably noticed that oh beautiful I do not have um, what you want to call it thing a fluid film in, in the can I ran out um, and I kind of don't need it so I didn't feel the need to, to get some more oh boy that's exactly what I wanted look how chunky that is so in an essence um, I don't have it in in the can uh, so we're gonna have to kind of do basically paint by numbers I guess um, and again this is hardly scientific so I'm just gonna put the glove of the I don't know can camera see that yes put the glove of the fluid film on the end here I want to come back redo the the cosmoline part once or twice and um, and that should be it um, I'm gonna leave that be outside probably somewhere over or here I guess so it doesn't get disturbed because it might rain yeah I guess I'm just gonna leave it here and uh, we'll we'll revisit on uh, when that gets uh, gets a little drier so I can actually put it on the on the car which will be probably either later on tonight um, or tomorrow whenever I feel like it but as of right now I like that setup that's pretty much exactly what I wanted so uh, on to part two and the next step is to find some appropriate spot and to install these bars I chose the passenger side for two reasons uh, yeah that's actually gonna work nicely one because it's easier to install them on this side and B if one of them gets loose I want them to actually fall closer to the ditch instead of to the oncoming traffic so it doesn't damage anybody else's car but that's it alrighty uh, let's go for a drive for a couple of days I guess all right guys it's been a week let's collect the fruits of our labor I've been driving this car for a while let's see if those are still there yes they are good okay all right let's get them to our little testing site yeah this one is slippery Okay, as you can tell, I have my fire hose almost ready. I do have some fire extinguishers handy dandy and I put them here because today is actually very sunny. So it's actually kind of hard to, hard to record stuff. Okay, we need to switch this around in just a smidgen. I should do it, I think. There we go. All right. We got a fire extinguisher handy. We got our little handy dandy blue torch. Um, now I guess we can start. Uh, let's start with the control. Control has, as you might remember, the old oil, some uh, some lithium grease, some ATF, some power steering fluid, etc., etc., etc. The usual stuff that you might see leaking. <clears throat> they, uh, they corrosion protection one has the uh, the usual rubber coating has the uh, cosmoline and has a fluid film and fluid film of course is very still very liquidy which is kind of the way it's supposed to be so I'm gonna take the flammable stuff off of me okay gloves and we're gonna see if we can do something about this Too bad you cannot see the plane. I can smell the tape. Well, that's about 15 seconds of uh, direct 
fire exposure. Nope. So far none of the usual fluids are catching fire, which is good. I see that the paper catching fire, that's normal. And it does smell like a burnt rubber. Nah, so far nothing. I think my torch is running out of the fuel. No, that would kind of suck. Okay. All right. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I think I ran out of fuel. <laughs> so much for my experiment. Oh, this is embarrassing. All right, we're gonna try to hurry up. So, fluid film. 15 seconds, direct flame exposure. It's pushing it around. It's smoking. No fire. <laughs> this is live as usual. Oh my goodness, I hope I will be able to finish this up. PayPal, PayPal, PayPal. PayPal for propane. Okay, Cosmoline. 15 seconds, roughly. I can see it being heated up and moving around. I don't know, can you tell on the camera? Finally, oh, the rubber coating is bubbling off. Uh, we might not be able to finish this up. Oh, about five, 15 seconds. So in essence, no. I don't think the uh, the fluid film is flammable per se. Uh, I do have one more thing to try. I'm gonna shake that up a little bit for the last bits. Hopefully, hopefully won't uh, act as a napalm bomb. But what I'm gonna do is start this up. So, as you can tell, as you can tell, the straight out of the bottle uh, Cosmolin is very flammable, as I anticipated. But on the vehicle, as applied and left to uh, to cure correctly, no, it's not. At least not to this little scientific experiment was. So yeah, actually, I'm really glad that I did this because uh, I was actually kind of curious after the viewer asked me that. So, all right, thanks for watching.